This is a pirated video game disc from 1999's Eastern Europe. It still works, mostly. These are the games it contains, and I'm gonna play each game for about an hour, where possible, and tell you about it. If I can find the game on GOG, I'll get it from them. Amazon is a slideshow style point and click adventure game where you play as a journalist tasked by an aged and dying explorer to undo an action from his youth. The game seems to feature some fantasy elements, however, from what I've played, I can tell you the voice acting is not stellar and the face textures and rigging are nightmare fuel. But I do have to hand it to the devs for the large amount of 3D animation scenes because those couldn't have been easy to make back then. Having the game be fully 3D rendered means the environments are pretty simple and most importantly dark, which makes playing the game and navigating its screens a bit annoying. There are several places where you can miss an entire room or hallway because of this and the puzzles themselves seem to be fairly above average in difficulty even in this first part of the game. The illustrations in the handwritten diary are really cool to see but reading the actual text is a pain. The game seems to rely heavily on you reading a lot of text and on finding clues for puzzles in said text, at least in this first part and there also seem to be a fair bit of number related puzzles as well. Not a game I'd be interested in continuing but you can find it on GOG if it interests you. International Cricket Captain 2 I got working from my abandonware and it looks like a sports management game which to be honest is a genre I have little to no interest in and this is for a sport I know nothing about and have possibly even less interest in. So Mayday Conflict Earth, I managed to get the My Abandonware version to install on Windows 10 but it would not run. So the first thing I tried was DG Voodoo 2 which proved to be very useful and made Project IGI run on Windows 10. That being done, it was still asking for the CD to be in the drive. I initially thought it might be because it's looking for a 32-bit system, so then I fired up my VMware Windows XP, which I initially got running also for Project Eggy. Which, by the way, you should check out my deep dive video in case you haven't. Link will be in the description. Back to Mayday. I then moved the install onto the XP virtual machine. I had to first reacquaint myself with transferring files to the VMware workstation, which is a slight pain in the dick, but it obviously didn't work. I don't know why I thought it would, but moving an entire install folder to a different directory would obviously make it not work. Okay, let's install it inside the XP machine. I upload the ISO and I obviously have no imaging software on the virtual machine. Shit nuggets. I install WinCD Emu on XP, doesn't work. Shit balls. I install Power ISO. This one works after a couple of restarts. I mount the image, I install the game successfully, try to run it. The bastard still asks for the CD. I mount the proper CD, it still asks for the fucking disc. Now it's time for desperate measures. Time to install my 24 year old pirated version. And wouldn't you know it, piracy, it works, fuck me. The game starts up, I can go through menu options and start a mission but unfortunately it crashes the VM when it should start the actual game. It's unknown if this is an issue with the game or the VM but that's about all the things I can do without spending even more time in troubleshooting this shit, it's just not worth it. Mayday Conflict Earth is a game that exists is all I can say about it. Pizza Syndicate, on the other hand, is a completely different beast, because this time I straight up installed the pirated version on my Windows 10 rig and after a bit of finagling around and setting compatibility mode to XP Service Pack 3, the fucker actually worked. I ran through the tutorials, being continuously and constantly confused by the very time appropriate art style, reminding me somewhat of Constructor and Lula the Sexy Empire. As far as I can tell from the tutorial, there's a fairly deep management tycoon game buried beneath the late 90s early 2000s era graffiti style exaggerated illustrations. There's not only a really granular pizza making feature, which I like, but there's restaurant layout and interior decorating for the Sims fans, audience testing, finance management, marketing, market research and there's an underworld component as well. So Pizza Syndicate, or Fast Food Tycoon as it's known in the US, could really work nowadays as a niche indie offering, 
minus the era appropriate interface design choices which are funny and even fun but really make navigating the game confusing at first and surely cause quite the learning curve as well. Respect Inc. proved to be yet another of these titles that is to be found only on my abandonware. I did my due diligence and tried to install both that version as well as my pirated version on both machines and even though I can see the menu and go through it and even start the game, there's nothing being rendered. And after talking to my buddy Randolph about it, he suggested I play around some more with the compatibility settings and once you know it, setting the compatibility to Windows 98 made it work. It still made it error the fuck out, but the game ran, granted with the help of DG Voodoo 2 and also on the pirated version, not the My Abandonware version. The early stark polygon graphics aren't that much of an issue, what is an issue is the not really understanding what to do part. Despite the game doing its best to explain it, and also apparently the game not allowing you to go back to the menu without restarting a mission from the very beginning. The menu screen features no text. What was it with games of this era and having the menus be contextual and the sound effects are the super cartoony ones which enforces the game's not so serious approach despite its subject matter. The game itself is a third person action game where you are a small time crook trying to become a big time gangster by doing a variety of missions. It's sort of a proto idea for GTA but nowhere near as cool, probably because it was released in 99 and on a much smaller budget. To be honest though, it's not something I would play even if I could get it to work as intended, but I'm sure it must have supplied some amount of fun to those who played it around the time of release. Warhammer 40,000 Rites of War is a hex grid turn based tactics game that surprisingly enough has you play as the Eldar. This being only the 6th video game from the Warhammer 40k verse, I think Games Workshop were still in the experimental phase and thought people wanted to play as the space elves as opposed to the space humans. The movement animations are pretty cool and the voice acting for the mission briefings is pretty good, even if fairly over the top, which is in tune with the universe so it works. Having played a bit of the tutorial, which crashed, and then the first two missions, I can sense there is a fairly solid tactics game in there, which I would have enjoyed playing if I had it in its time. I can't say how well it is balanced though, since these types of games can sometimes get ridiculously difficult as you progress through the campaigns. You can find it on GOG, but considering the modern Warhammer 40k offerings, there are objectively superior experiences out there both in Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, which I have been covering every DLC of, as well as Warhammer 40k Gladius Relics of War, which is much closer to this being a hex grid 4x focused on combat, which I also previously covered, links in the description. Roland Garros Championship Tennis 99, as the title implies, is a tennis video game which refused to work properly on either of my machines. It allowed me to run the game, go through the menus and even start the game properly but obviously nothing is rendered as it should. Or it's shadow people playing shadow tennis in a shadow world. On the other hand, it's a sports title so who gives a shit. And that's it for this particular pirated disc, which of these games did you already know about? What else would you like me to discuss about software piracy in Eastern Europe at the third of the millennium? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this, you might want to check out the video on screen right now. I've been Steven Nonsense, I have a Patreon, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.